Hey guys, Evans here. Um, super excited to share with you today uh, concerning stress. It's so funny. Uh, um, well, we're going into metabolism some more, and we covered several other things already. We hit on age, gender, uh, metabolic age, uh, you know, part of the age component. We talked about hormones, talked about hydration, which was really important. Um, <clears throat> so, um, just trying to see if I missed, oh, sleep, <laughs> if I missed anything, sleep. Um, you know, so we had several different topics already. Um, but the next iteration is stress, and then we can go into nutrition and exercise, supplementation, all those kind of things. And uh, um, the reason why I'm laughing so much with this stress talk is because I'm turning the lights on and off. My eyes are stressed out going through the process. Um, but today, just so you know, my meals, I didn't even think about it. I've always been writing down my meal plan on a piece of paper, but I can actually see it because I uh, like create it in a program. So... Um, for my lunch, I'm going to make some eight ounces of tilapia and, um, you know, what's that? Some zucchini squash. And then I just have some almonds and some sunflower seeds on the side with that. And then in dinner, I have six ounces of, um, of tilapia with some, uh, um, some rice and sunflower seeds and some peanuts on the side. For breakfast today, we have um, half an ounce of the 75% fat-free cheese by Kibat, two tortilla wraps um, by Mission, you know, the four net carb wraps, as well as a, um, <clears throat> a quarter cup egg whites, three eggs, and a cup of cucumbers. So I'm also have my snacks in there, some protein shakes, some crackers, some almonds, and I think I have the same snack for everything except for my evening snack has a little bit of uh, egg whites in there. But... Let's go in. So first, let me grab my, my ingredients. <clears throat> I know I hardly ever cook fish, it seems like, lately. I've just been chicken, 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 chicken. So um, I got in trouble yesterday. I made this huge thing of food. And uh, um, Dana was like, oh, um, <laughs> she was so disappointed. I took it all to work and ate it. It was amazing. Um, so it was lots of fun. But we know that your metabolism, as we talked about, and I always like to do a little bit of review just so everybody's on the same page. It's uh, the rate for our purposes in which you burn fuel. You know, so uh, um, and there's things that impact it. You know, anywhere from how much you sleep or you know how much water you drink. We talk about dehydration slows your metabolism down, so it's really important to hydrate and use the urine test. Look at the color of your urine. Uh, um, as a good indicator of how hydrated you are or not. We talked about sleep, you know, and how it's important to start speeding up your metabolism. Um, we talked about hormones. That was a big thing. That was a big topic in my life just yesterday alone. But we talked about some of the dominant hormones when it comes to your metabolism. And, you know, one we talked about was testosterone. The other one was thyroid hormone and how your brain works. Biggest thing is we're looking, coming through this vein um, is to understand that concept of homeostasis, which is that same state, your body doesn't want to change. Um, your mind doesn't want to change. It wants to stay in the same state. It, it's a comfort um, design, as well as uh, um, your hypothalamus regulates that. So if you understand homeostasis, is going to really help. So how does stress impact your metabolism? I'm just going to grab some cutting tools here. I'm going to throw some uh, onions into the fish setup. So I'm going to like dice up some onions, saute those in there um, as well. So, you know, what is stress first of all? Stress is, you know, any change. We just talk about change. Any change your body or your mind experiences, it, it's called stress. And stress could be anything from, um, the reason why I have two pans here, I'm going to make Dana her own food. Um, I share a lot of things that I don't do well at sharing my, um, my food that I prepare. Once I measure it, I struggle with sharing it. Um, I, I'm going to stick with some of my macros and uh, um, we'll talk about what macros are and everything else. So I prefer just to you know, cook somebody else their own food um, because all my food is measured. So anyway, and that's just, you know, you don't have to do that to be fit probably. Um, that's just a little bit of OCD tendency. <laughs> there, but but uh, um, what are they talking about? Um, so we're, we're talking about different types of stress, and stress is just that response to change. Um, what was that? Um, when you're coming out with Capital City Farmers Market, offer some cooking fitness. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool uh, to do that. 
Uh, the farmer's market is actually today. So big shout out to City of Dover and all those that are participating in the farmer's market. It's an opportunity to shop local and get some stuff from some local businesses that you may not be familiar with. And uh, um, But um, back to stress, it, it, it could be anything from a death of a, of a loved one or a friend. It could be you know, a health injury. So actually when your body is, under, is injured, it experiences this stress response. And I'll talk about it. It could be crime and just watching the news. So you have to be mindful of how do you uh, manage even things like the news. I know for me, we, we have this motto or mantra in my family, which is protect this house. So uh, um, we don't do negative. You know, so we, we do our best to shut out all those kind of things. Anyone who knows me goes, Evans, you live in a bubble. And I'm pretty proud of the bubble that we've created um, in our life because there's enough other stressors going on. It can be self-abuse, um, whether it's drug abuse or, uh, um, or you know, um, harming yourself physically or just negative self-talk. And we talked about that in that mindset um, video we did, the first one, or maybe it was the second one. We did with Sean, we just talked about how does your mind work, the subconscious and the conscious mind. So anything you're saying to yourself, and I'm still going to promote this book again. I wish, you know, I don't get royalties on it, but it was a game changer for me is what you say when you talk to yourself. So, you know, it's a great, great book that really dives into how the brain works and, uh, um, and you know, what you're actually saying about yourself makes a difference. But that can stress you out. If you're saying, and sometimes we, we're not sensitive to the stressors that we feel. So it could be going into a room, it could be the lighting, it could be the TV, it could be the volume, it could be your neighbor. You know, I'm stressing you out just talking about things that stress you out. You know, um, it could be sexual problems, it could be family changes, marriages, divorces, you know, uh, um, you know, children going to college, children going to elementary school, depending on your disposition. Um, you know, arguments with friends and loved ones, you know, um, responsibilities and duties. You know, I know for me, you know, I just had to build my professional resume for the first time um, because I was going in for this thing called 40 under 40. And, um, you know, I, I became self employed so I wouldn't have to write a resume, but I did it. And that was stressful, you know. Um, and I looked and I said, man, you know, it's amazing how many. Um, things that I'm committed to and I've been committed to for a long time you know so all those things can cause stressors in your, in your life so I just want these uh, to sweat down you can kind of know when your onions are ready because they become a little bit more translucent you know meaning like you, you can see partially through it so anyway you know it could be um, physical changes like a, just a lack of sleep can cause stress in the body I like to season my veggies before I throw my other stuff in um, you know, it could be, it could be a uh, um, money, <laughs> lack of it or having too much of it, you know, and I say too much of it. Sometimes people have windfalls where they inherit money, but they don't have a plan for that money. And now that money becomes a stressor in their life. You, you know, um, I do believe in abundance, so we're not going to think that there's anything such as too much, um, as long as you have a plan to, to do something with it. You know, it could be environmental changes, the weather, the school, your jobs, you know, responsibilities, all those kind of things. So you guys get it. You know, stress is in our world. There's no way out of stress. But now how we've trained ourselves and conditioned ourselves does make a huge impact on what happens when it comes to our metabolism. So just so you guys understand what happens in your body when you experience stress. So your brain, that hypothalamus guy that we had talked about, he recognizes, oh, wow, we're experiencing one of these gabillion stresses. It could be your diet can cause stress in the body. Um, some foods that are very low in nutrients can actually cause internal stressors on, on your body. And, and we don't feel it. But anyway, the way God made us was such that, you know, once we experience the stress, it sends this message from our brain to our adrenal glands. So adrenal glands are right on top of your kidneys. Kidneys back there. Right on top of your kidneys or your adrenal glands. And this is looking good. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. So, but it sends a message to your adrenals saying, hey, we're under, your stre under, under stress. And everybody's heard of like a fight or flight. That's all about stress. So your um, adrenal cortex or the outward part of your adrenal. Am I going to sneeze? <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, um, 
So your adrenal glands recognize the stress and they produce this hormone that helps uh, um, boost your, 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 your um, energy output. So that's the name of the game with it. It's really this hormone is called cortisol. Many of us have heard about it before. And um, there's a lot of like bad press about cortisol. But if you've ever heard a story about a mom being able to lift up a car to save their child or, you know, some miraculous, miraculous strength thing, and it wasn't the story of Samson, it probably had a lot to do with stress at that moment. You know, so it, it's, you know, it's, you know, someone's in a panic and they're able to lift this or push that or run away. Think about it. There were wild animals during creation and God was like, hey, if you get in trouble and they're not listening, you need to be able to run. So, um, you know, cortisol gives you the extra energy boost to run. Now, many of us, when we're under stress, we don't feel an energy boost. And the reason why is because that stress from ch being chased by an animal is what we call um, chronic, I mean, excuse me, acute stress. So it's just a quick, short burst of stress, so to speak. So it produces this minor spike in your, um, in your hormones. And it's coupled typically with testosterone. Well, um, when you experience stress because of life and all the other things that are going on in our world, many times that's what we call uh, um, chronic uh, um, stress. So your body is just constantly, constantly, um, I'm going to do Dana's first. So it looks like these are breaking up this way. Let me just chop up her food first and then I can do what I want with mine. So we got to turn this down really well so we don't burn our onions. And we are good to go. So the only thing I'm using today is a little bit of salt, black pepper, and some smoked paprika. And I got my onions in there. I'm going to throw, um, I ran out of pepper, so I'm going to run to Produce Junction at some point today and get some. But uh, um, I diced them up just because I'm going to stir them all in together. And it cooks actually a little quicker. So, you know, sometimes I bake them, sometimes I do different things. But I figure if I make some slices... It'll cook pretty fast and save me a little bit of time on, on the back end. So, uh, um, but yeah, so so that's acute stress coupled with testosterone, and boom, you have the energy to do whatever you need to do. Um, the way we get the energy though is the cortisol hormone shoots over to your um, liver and to your to your muscles, and those are the only two places you actually store carbohydrates. We call it glycogen inside the muscles. So you store sugar inside the muscles and in your liver and your body breaks down that, um, that sugar, dumps it into your bloodstream, and now you have sugar that can be used but for energy. Well, if you find out some bad news, that same process happens, but most times we don't have the desire to run or if the lighting is really bad in a room and it stresses you out, um, sometimes even subconsciously, then that process happens. If you're watching the news and you hear about war and crime and all the stuff that happens in these ages, that process happens. And this excess amount of sugar being dumped over into your um, blood slows your metabolism down. Because your body says, hey, I don't know what to do with this because we're not going to go run. We don't need to defend ourselves. It's the story of the little girl who's about to get jumped or picked on or robbed. And she like beats up her assailant. It's like, how does she get the strength to do that? That was stress going to work. But since most of our challenges, probably that's the reason why guys don't, uh, uh, when they're kids, don't stress out as bad because we fight. Uh, <laughs> well, they don't fight anymore. When I was a kid in the 80s, we fought. But, uh, um... You know, um, but because we're not doing anything physical um, and our stress is too often, which means it's chronic, then it just gets stored as excess fat. Your body goes, oh, I got all this extra sugar. It's no different than drinking a soda. It's no different than eating a donut to your body. Um, it's like, oh, wow, I got all these extra carbohydrates. I don't know what to do with it. So let's store it. Now, the problem with this storage is that it's typically stored in a way... If the storage is tied to um, the stress, so your body wants to defend itself. So it's not like it gets stored right back into your liver and your muscles and it's like, oh, okay, I didn't use it, let me put that money back into our savings account. It doesn't really work that way. What happens is it doesn't get used, it gets dumped into um, the fat cells surrounding your waist uh, um, predominantly. And the reason why is just this idea of I need to defend myself. So it's your body's own little defense mechanism why does Dana's look better than mine and it's happening at the same time? 
you know, uh, um, and it slows your metabolism down because you have less energy output. Remember, lean mass is critical for um, is critical for your metabolism as far as the speed and calories you burn every day. And now the stress is causing this increase of, of, of belly fat. Over time, it can even lead to something called insulin resistance. Basically, your if this was your amount of sugar you produce, or the pan was, and then you get the spike in sugar, your body spikes up this hormone called insulin to get the sugar back down. Well, when the spike happens consistently, the insulin just stays up because insulin metabolizes really slow um, in your body. It's, you, you know, it's a it's a long chain uh, um, polypeptide hormone, what they call it, but basically it means that it, it takes a long time for insulin to come back down. So though sugar may come down quick, fairly quickly, insulin takes time to come down. And if insulin is consistently high, then, and then uh, um, it's harder and harder to get your sugar down. Well, how does insulin bring your sugar down? To make it really simple, it shuts off fat burning. You know, so it says, hey, let's just stop burning fat right now. Um, so we can focus on burning sugar because we know excess sugar in the blood is going to kill you so it shuts down the fat burning but even if you're not eating so I've had diabetics who had a bad night or just regular you know well mostly diabetics because they're uh, more sensitive to this insulin resistance um, situation and they're taking their blood sugar you know um, more regularly but I've had people check their blood sugar before they go to bed um, and even if they were on a very low um, a very low uh, carbohydrate diet. They when they when they woke up in the morning, their blood sugar was higher because they were stressed out. I've had people during work check their blood sugar after work, and after work their blood sugar was higher, and they didn't even eat anything different. And the reason why many times is because of this response of stress that's going on. It doesn't mean quit your job, you know, um, you know, <laughs> per se, but it does mean uh, um, we can control this variable or make modifications. So things I do to make those modifications, you start with, for managing the stress component, it always starts with self-talk for me. Now, if you believe in prayer, they say those who pray typically have a lower stress levels than those who do not pray. So I would say, if you do pray, pray. That's one thing you can do to decrease stress. I'm just gonna grab something and put this up. You know, because they say people who pray actually wind up living longer and having lower stress levels, so that's kind of cool. Other things you can do is monitor what the thoughts that are in your mind. So, you know, um, one of my favorite scriptures it talks about casting down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So, if a thought comes in your head and you go, mm, that's not who I am, that's not where it is, you have to assassinate that thought. And sometimes you make, I, I know I do, I make people uncomfortable because I don't even let them put thoughts in my head at times. So I'm like, ah, oh, no, I ain't trying to hear that right now. <laughs> you know, because that can cause worrying, and we know worrying ages you faster and, and, and shuts you down. So, you know, th that's really important. Other things is things like reading, you know, and I'm not talking about reading a love novel, but reading like the Positive Mental Attitude book, you know, something that's going to help your mind, you know, deal with that. Other times it's just moving. So sometimes just to handle and manage that stress, you may say, hey, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to do something else because we know that the stress is catabolic or it is going to create this breakdown of sugars. So if I do something um, low intense, you know, it may help burn the sugar. If it is an acute stress, so we have chronic stress, which is pretty much my life. You know, I'm up at 5, 6, I go to bed at 12, 1. You know, and I run multiple businesses and I do a lot of things, so my stress levels are typically higher. I've learned to manage that fairly well. But there are those times where you find yourself a little bit more fatigued and often your immune system is being a compromise. That when it comes to exercise and stress, what you want to make sure you do is drop down the intensity a little bit, maybe for a week or two. It sounds almost counterintuitive, but it just allows your body to restore normal again because it still has to manage that cortisol spike, which is healthy for exercise for short term, is not healthy for long term. So really, really important to kind of consider that component of, hey, what's going on in my life right now? Is it a workout that I should go out there today and just beast it out because I heard some bad news? Yeah, if it's once in a blue moon, but if it's uh, um, every day I'm going through this, this rut situation, then I may have to change it out. 
Other things that help decrease stress in your body is vegetables. So with that, let's chop up some vegetables. So we know um, typically your veggies are going to produce a higher alkalinity in the body. Look, I'm not going to go hyper analytical, but we know to increase those veggies, get seven to nine cups of vegetables in a day. It's a lot easier than it sounds um, if you like to eat food. But things like, you know, you measure your, 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 uh, um, your, your spinach raw, and by the time you cook four cups of spinach down, it's nothing. You see me do it almost every other day. It turns into nothingness. So that's a great way to get your veggies in. And sometimes you got to supplement. So for me, I like adaptogenic herbs, things like rhodiola rosé. Um, it's natural, and what it does is naturally helps your body decrease stress. You know, uh, um, you know so it's really, really important. It's also, you know, proper planning. And this is for long term. They say that people who work till like a job till like 69, 70 something dies at 70 um, within less years than people who retire earlier. So, of course, I'm an employer, so I'm not anti jobs, but it's just important to kind of think about your long term plan and say, hey, if I can position myself, you know, um, to retire earlier, I can live longer. You know, um, other things is just manage your responsibilities. The reality is you can't be all things to all people. And today I think there's a great deficit in leadership and people will step up to the plate. So if you show that giftedness, then people are going to try to say, hey, so-and-so, can I, can I use your services? Can, I, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? And you have to kind of have that alignment with, with what is your personal value system. What are your missions and what are your goals specific for you? Like for me and my business, we have core values for my business. But honestly, for my family, we have core values as well. So if it doesn't fall within our core values, it's not going to work. And then we also have personal missions that we're on, meaning not like mission trip to, you know, to help people in foreign countries, but we have objectives that we're looking to accomplish within certain time frames. And what does that mean? It means sometimes we have to say no. And you start realizing when you practice no, <laughs> and these are people that overcommit, some of you guys need to say yes to some things, but uh, um, and I say some of you guys, there's some things I need to say yes to as well that I've been saying no to. But if we manage those stressors, that can help us maintain our health and speed our metabolism. So, just to kind of recap, stress is any change of body experience. Um, you're going to have stress in your life. I love it when I talk to people and they go, "Oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed," or they say, "Oh, my stress level is a one." You know, I'm like, I don't know how you do it. You know, everybody I know who's producing right now has higher than a one stress level. But uh, um, one thing, and Sean just coming on there, hey, Sean, uh, just made me uh, remember, is something that, you know, um, I'm get, becoming more and more consistent with, you know, is what we call the Miracle Morning. So there's a great book, uh, Hal Elrod wrote this book called The Miracle Morning. And honestly, for me, my business team, uh, my staff has been a game changer because it's about presetting your day. You know, if you decide that this is how my day is going to go, you have a better chance of having a successful day versus waiting and being responsive to the day. So my children, their favorite book right now, or for the last couple of years, just because of school and they went to and everything else, is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And my kids are 9 and 10, you know, and uh, um, they always talk about habit number one, be proactive, you know, and, and you know, I'm in charge of me. So with that mindset, you know, habit number two is begin with the end with mind and all this other kind of stuff. But the, the, with that mindset, you can say, hey, I'm in charge of me. I can be proactive. I can think about what is the end going to look like and then build out my day or have that expectation. So I expect to win. I expect to have a good day. I'm not going to wait and see what happens throughout the day. We create that. And with that mindset, it helps you control stressors in your life and you start realizing, hey, I can control that waistline, I can get low, I can manage stressors because when that phone rings and it's somebody unexpected, I'm expecting good news. So uh, um, really, really important, Dana's food is done. I'm just going to switch gears, put hers in a container, make my breakfast. By the time I finish for her breakfast, my breakfast is going to be really quick. All this squash should be done and we'll just finish up this squash here. Um, for my veggies. I think I have something else in my meal plan. What else I got? All the rest is just seeds and I'll just measure those out and put in a Ziploc bag um, for the day and, and, and some protein shakes in there. So one quick second while I switch gears. 
So feel free, as I'm switching gears, if you have a question, a comment, um, I want to stay focused today and stay on stress because we go into nutrition um, later today at noon with Sean and TJ. Uh, we're going to go in there and just really dial into the nutrition part of metabolism. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, it's way bigger than calories in and calories out. You know, it's way bigger than just knowing, oh, this is what my macros are. Um, so that's probably going to be like a two-dayer, just that one topic, um, though every other topic is a little smaller, just because there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace, and eating healthy foods alone is, you know, uh, um, not necessarily the answer for your metabolism. So I'm just going to rinse this off and then fry these eggs. so funny when we do events we always say never leave the stage empty you know and I'm gonna chat and I'm gonna be like oh, I'm gonna wash some dishes I'll be right back <laughs> but uh, um how many eggs do I get well I always get three eggs so I have three eggs and a quarter cup of egg whites and the cheese I was talking about is gone so, talk about stressor. You build your meal plan and you find out your daughter is a chef that cooks with the same foods you cook with and you didn't plan for that. So I'm going to have to chop out one of those eggs, add another um, one of my egg whites and do um, you know, just regular cheese just to compensate for the fat content uh, in that meal. But yeah, my daughter, she's been cooking up a ton. The kids are looking to start their own business. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it should have launched already. I'm the reason why. I had to just had to say no um, because I had some other obligations in the beginning of the summer. But they're going to start a business, see me if it cooks, and uh, I'm really, really excited about it. You know, so you know, over the next two weeks, I want to take them downtown, have them meet the um, health board inspector, um, have them meet you know the mayor and different people, so they know. Okay, as an entrepreneur. Who are the connections? What do they need to do? I'm going to take them to city, uh, down to the um, licensing office so they can fill out the paperwork, get their business license, and have them meet with an attorney, you know, to create a partnership because it's their business, you know, uh, um, not my business, and just kind of talk to them about some of the responsibilities, the thought process of what they're looking to accomplish long term, what's the mission, the vision of their business. So it's kind of going to be business school at CME Fit for the next couple of weeks, and I'm really excited about that. You know, um, but their business is they want to be able to um, provide meals for people, like like cook meals um, specific to your macronutrient needs. So they're going to work in tandem with our nutritionists and say, oh, okay, this is what you need for your calories and your macronutrients, and all you have to do is purchase it, you know, um, in there. So similar to um, like a Blue Apron, for lack, you know, just for relatability. The difference, though, their separator is that it's cooked already. You know, it, all you have to do is put it in the freezer or microwave it, and your food is done. So I think it's a great idea. You know, I think it's you know, I know a lot of people in the bodybuilding world already do that kind of stuff, just because it saves you time. You know, time is our greatest commodity. We all get 24 hours, and we determine what we're going to do um, with it. You know. So I think it would be a lot of fun. I'm just trying to explain to my daughter that if she wants to uh, um, be successful in this business, she should not start off as the cook. Like she really enjoys cooking, but as a you know, as my personal business principle, you know, you want to be the guy working on the business, not in the business. And if she starts off as the cook, you know, she can cook with the cook part time. You know, but you're going to burn out. You still have to get your schooling work done. You still have to travel. You still have to do other things that are important to you. Um, so you can't be the cook. So we're actually going to go um, shopping for a cook, so to speak. We're going to have an ad. We're going to hire, interview, all kinds of stuff to find a cook before them. So I'm really, really excited. It's so cool to see entrepreneurship going into the next generation. And they're not wasting time. They're not waiting until, you know, oh, when I grow up, they're like, hey, we see the need now so they want to do it now and i'm like hey you know um my goal in my business is to position myself that i can you know help my family accomplish their goals as well so really excited about that um it's gonna be a lot of fun 
Um, you know, the, the designing of the meal planning part is kind of easy, of course, already. The macro part, because we're already doing that as far as seeing you fit. So they are kind of, uh, you know, um, poaching my, my, my influence, but they are my kids too. So, you know, that, that, that's a blessing. So, cool deal. So it was great chatting with you guys. I didn't see any questions. Uh, um, didn't expect less than uh, that for them. <laughs> Thank you very much, Terry. Um, didn't see any questions, so I'm going to start wrapping this up. Make my uh, um, my um, cut up my cheese, put it in a wrap, and I'm done for today. But look, stay tuned. Noon today, um, we're gonna go live from my office, and we're gonna start into this um, nutrition component. And I'm gonna give away some great nuggets. I'm gonna get a little specific. If you ask questions, I'm gonna answer the questions. Um, so feel free to ask me the questions that you know, normally you may not be able to just get a direct answer from. Um, but then uh, um, I think it's going to really, really help everyone with it. So again, I'm Evans here at Seeing You Fit um, with Fitness of the Lifestyle. And I'll be heading to work shortly, so see you guys soon.